full-time town clerk assistant. Shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate the sum of $44,662 for the purpose of hiring a full-time town clerk assistant? No. The Warren article contains the cost of 39 weeks from April 1st, uh, 2018 to December 31st, 2018. Total yearly cost $59,549 recommended by the Board of Selectmen 4-0. So moved. Second. Sec moved by Tim, seconded by Regina. Um, anybody have um, questions? Questions, go ahead. Could you help me with the Warren article contains the cost of 39 from April 1 to 2018. What happened January 1 to December 31? What it, doesn't get, it doesn't get voted on until March. It doesn't get so voted on. So it doesn't, wouldn't take effect until so April 1st. So therefore, after in 2019, this is a full-time position from January Correct. to whatever, right? Correct. It's not quite worded that way, but yeah. it probably <laughs> should be. Okay. So now, Jane, if you'd just go over this again and yeah, kind absolutely. of explain what's going <clears> on I'll just here, kind of give you a background is. of why <clears throat> I feel it's necessary. Um, my staff is amazing, but they are not and should not be miracle workers. The days of it only being busy on the first and last day of the month and Mondays are over. As of August 30th, the revenue in 2017 is up more than $200,000 over last year at that time. August 28th was our busiest day on record. Um, it was eight times our 2017 daily average. Lines are to the door on most days. During these overly busy times, staff is unable to even use the restroom until their lunch break. <clears throat> not to mention the wait time for our customers. That does not make me happy. As far as the number of transactions we process, speaking motor vehicle only, keeping in mind that we do much more than just motor vehicle, although it is 90% of what we do. Ten years ago in 2007, when I was first elected town clerk, there were 18,638 vehicles registered in town. This year, we project that number at 21,177 vehicles. The number of transactions in 2007 were 18,891, and this year we project that number to be 21,474. Total revenue collected in 2007 was 3.5 million, 2.7 million of that to be town funds, and this year's total is projected at 4.7 million with 3.7 million of that to be town funds. That is an increase of $1 million over a 10-year period, with the exception of the file clerk who works 16 hours per week doing filing alone except during election time. Our staffing is exactly the same as it was in 2007. Not only have the numbers increased, but we also provide many more services than we did in 2007, <coughs> including OHRV registrations, hunting and fishing licenses, and our registered voters have increased significantly, up over 3,000 voters as well. There isn't a report available to monitor the number of phone calls received. The clerks are interrupted during that time, helping the customers in front of them that are transferred to departments providing numerous pieces of information to phone customers per day. I have two part-timers who work the windows. One works Monday and Tuesday, the 17, total of 17 hours. The other works Wednesday through Friday, which is 21 hours. One can work, if available, an additional day and a half. The other, if available, can work only one extra day beyond her scheduled days. This becomes a problem when a full-timer or part-timer takes vacation, is out sick, or there is a family emergency. This scenario actually happened only a few weeks ago. One employee was away on vacation, another was off due to a family member having surgery. There were three of us scheduled for this particular day. I was already covering one of the positions um, at the window. One of the other two scheduled for that day had a family emergency over the weekend which required her to take Monday and Tuesday off. I was covering the bookkeeper which keeps the window closed until mid-morning to do the bookkeeping. That left one window open until the bookkeeping was completed on a Monday which is not a good scenario. Our office has been running thin for several years now and it has come to a point that I have no choice but to do something about it. We have tried to band-aid the situation for the past couple of years but the time has come to fix the root of the problem. I would just like to say that a part-timer will not be useful to me at all as they cannot work any more hours than the 29 and a half hour policy allows. To add to the scenario, if this had been during election time, it would have been disastrous as I am tied to my desk during elections and have zero time to assist at the windows. The scenario happened again today. 
that, in, that entire scenario happened again today. And um, from 3 to 4 o'clock this afternoon, I had one clerk at the, working at the window. So, you know, it's, it's, um, if we had another window open, we would never go down to one window. So, you know, I think it's important that we um, are able to service our customers to the best of our ability, and the way we are staffed right now, <clears throat> it's nearly impossible. This month, it's December is, is generally a quiet month. We, um, it's reasonably slow, and this week I can't, it's slow in comparison to the other months, but um, this week's been much busier than, than a normal December week. So it's, it's not changing. It's only getting worse. Okay, Jane, <clears throat> if, this, um, if this warrant article passes, how does that affect this, the budget we just, um, we just moved? Is it going to affect it in any way? Well, it would increase it by what the warrant article is. We'll add to it. Yeah. Yeah. The default. Right. Yeah. That, I think I mentioned that um, the $80,480 would go to one ten two ninety two. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two, yeah, you did. Because that's what you had actually requested originally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see the difference. <laughs> okay. Anybody um, have questions for, for Jane about this? Yeah. How'd you do? Well, you sort of were putting your hand up. I, I was? Mm. Okay. This is very okay. subtle thing okay. that I noticed okay. with you. I very perceptive, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Um, so this is the uh, the article that will take our current part-time part bookkeeper. Yeah, she's a full-time bookkeeper. Full-time bookkeeper. Yeah. Thank you. Right now her position, and if I can just explain that, it might answer your question for you before you even ask it. Uh, my bookkeeper right now is, um, her, her position is uh, bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. In order to free up that position and salary, I would I would promote her to senior bookkeeper. Keeping that bookkeeper position would would technically be vacant at that point. Changing the job title from bookkeeper to assistant full time assistant clerk because there is not a full time assistant clerk in the contract right now. So assuming that this warrant out of the past. Will there be an open position for a bookkeeper of any type? No. Okay. So effectively, you're moving this from a full-time bookkeeper to an assistant town clerk, correct? No. Correct. Okay. Yes. And you're also uh, <clears throat> taking action to convert this into a, a union position, correct? Correct. It is presently uh, not a union position. No, it, the bookkeeper... No, well, uh, or the assistant. There is, there is the not, one, there is not a full-time assistant clerk position right now. There are two part-time assistant clerks, and those are contractual. Part-time. Yes. They are union. Yes. And Everyone in my is, office except full-time is not. The full-time is yes. The full-time is okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I would change that bookkeeper position to assistant town clerk. Okay. So by making the assistant town clerk part of the union, you're keeping that person in the union mm -hmm. with a new title. Correct. So the only motivation uh, is for putting them in a union is to keep that person in a union. Is that correct? I don't really know how to answer why, why that. Are we why are we motivated to make an assistant town clerk a union position? What benefit? How does the town benefit well, I think you'd find by having an assistant town clerk that is a union member? I versus think you an assistant town clerk that is not a union member? A, I think you would find some pushback from the union because there are already two part-time assistant clerks that are in the union. They would be doing the same job, just a difference of part-time and full-time. So the reason is because you're anticipating pushback from the union. But no, I think that's reasonable. I didn't say it was unreasonable. I'm just no, saying you're I'm not saying I'm doing it because I anticipate pushback. I'm doing it because I find that to be very reasonable because the, that position is technically already in the union as, an, as a part-timer. Why wouldn't it be in the union as a full-timer? The assistant town clerk is not in the union. That's, that's my what point. I'm talking about. I understand okay. that, but that's my point. There are two part-time assistant town clerks right now. It is the same job, only one is full. The, the new one, one be would be full-time, and the, the other two that I have are part-time. That wasn't clear. The part-timers are actually also called assistant town clerks? Yes. 
Okay, now that's clear. Yes. So now you're looking at more or less um, consistency across four and five time limits. Thank yep. you. Sometimes it's slow to get in my head. David, 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 David. Oh, no, hold on. Tim, have you finished? Tim? Oh, hell no. I didn't think so. Just hold on, David. Um, hold on. Why he was done? Sorry. No, no, that's okay. Relax. Plenty of time. Um, <coughs> the number in this Warren article is not the actual salary. It's a delta, right? It's a what? Delta. I'm not sure I understand. What delta, the difference between what she's making now and what she will be making. Plus the additional full timer. Right. So what is what is what would the total pay for this assistant contract actually be? Warren article, Tim. No, it isn't. That's the delta. That includes the increase as well for the for the bookkeeper. Is that correct, Christy? I just want to make sure that what they have is the That's same. That's what the. They're confused or I'm confused. Oh, yeah. So the salary itself for the assistant town clerk would be thirty six seven sixty four. And the additional to go to the senior bookkeeper for 39 weeks is $2,984. Well, how much will the, assist, the full-time assistant time clerk make is the question. 36764 That, But that's just for the 39 weeks, right? That's not for the full year. Is that correct, Christy? Yeah, cost for 39 weeks. Yeah, that's just from April 1st to the end of the, end of the year. So the, the, hour, the hourly rate that's is... That's the annual salary. Then I just oh, that is annual. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sorry. That is, that is the annual. Say the number again, please. Thirty-six seven sixty-four. That's for thirty-nine weeks. No, that's annual. Fifty-two weeks. Yeah. Okay, so just to be clear, to clear up the confusion, the reason the number is on the one article fifty-nine four five nine is yeah. because it includes other things beyond salary, like FICA, correct, pension, stuff like that. Okay. I can understand that. All right. But I'm looking at the. <coughs> So what's on this warrant article is total cost, not pay. Okay. But Tim, I don't want to interrupt you, but I have to ask this question because I'm getting a little confused here. Okay. okay. After this passes, the full-time bookkeeper becomes a full-time town clerk assistant. No. The full-time bookkeeper becomes senior bookkeeper. And Are then... Hiring, let me ask you a question. Are you hiring somebody? Yes. You're hiring a new person in yes. that department. That's the part that's a little yes. bit confusing. Okay, there's I didn't a new get hire. That either. Thank you for pointing okay. it out. Okay, that's get that. what. Can, can I try and explain that's it That's where again we're for you? with the okay. disconnect. Okay, is that there at the okay. end of the day there's going to be another employee in that department? Correct. Okay. Yes. Now we're getting to the bottom of this yes. thing. So we have we have a bookkeeper right now. In the contract, there's bookkeeper and senior bookkeeper. I don't need two bookkeepers in my office. That second position in the contract is wasted in my office. I don't need two. So in order to free up one of those positions without creating a whole new position within the contract, I, my plan is to promote the bookkeeper to senior bookkeeper. She will it'll still be the same person. She'll just be promoted. And then change the, the title of the bookkeeper to assistant town clerk full time. Okay, so we've got. And then hire someone for that position. Right now we've got two bookkeepers. No. We have two bookkeeper positions in the union. There's only one bookkeeper. Okay, and, and, and after this passes, assuming it passes, how many bookkeepers will you have? <laughs> You'll still have one. One, but she'll be the senior bookkeeper. Right. I don't right. care. I don't care what flavor. I know it's she is. confusing the way the contract is written, so I I get your confusion. Believe me. And it, and it really matters to me not whether the union says we're entitled to have twenty bookkeepers. What matters is what we budget for, and right. and, and, and so uh, right now your budget reflects one bookkeeper or two. One. One. So this is truly we're going to keep that one bookkeeper. This is a brand new position. Correct. I don't care what body you put in the position. It's a right. brand new position right. for the cost reflected in this warrant. Correct. Right? All right. Yes. So we have an extra body. Correct. Right. Now, as I recall from watching the always informative Board of Selectmen's meetings, that the uh, physical office that you have does not accommodate this extra body. That's correct. 
and that uh, you had testified there, I believe, that uh, effectively that you didn't really give much consideration to how you were going to physically accommodate this person until after your request for this extra person was approved. I've given it consideration. I've definitely taken measurements and, and tried to figure out where I could put more in people. In terms of having a plan people. as to what... Do you I, have a plan? I, I mean, I have a general plan, but... You want to tell us about it? I would need to talk to the building inspector to really be able to... To make it happen. So basically, there's no plan. I mean, you have a general idea, she but not has a plan. An idea too. She has an idea, but not a plan. That's that's fine. Ideas are plans. Wait, wait. Do you want yeah. to share your idea with us? I can have sure. think of many okay, dreams please. that were ideas that were never plans that I've had in life. Tim, she's going to share no, the, her idea. The, the problem with it is, <laughs> we are so outgrowing this building already, well. um, and it would displace other people. So my thought, when you. I, if only if we were in my office could I really show you what I'm talking about. But it would be to shorten up the desk space where my deputy currently sits and put the door, which currently faces out toward the lobby, toward the side, right. and put another That's exactly body what I figured you'd do. at the okay. front. Because having a window on the side makes no sense right. because no, the no. customers couldn't see them from there. Right. So your idea is to so maintain that, the existing physical space the perimeter of the existing physical space and re reorganize it. Correct. Okay. I, I can, Tim, it, I no, understand. it's just a matter of moving a door and putting in a window. I understand. The, the previous now. comments about not having a plan were okay. concerning me. I wanted to get it cleared up. And now it's been cleared up. Thank you, Jane. I appreciate that. I have a plan. It's just here. There's nothing. Well, now it's know, in here, Nothing physically here. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. In, in, uh, you, you mentioned the motiva I think you mentioned the motivation behind this is that you've got long lines, a lot of times. A lot, a lot of the time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but this this is not going to increase the hours of operation at all, is it? No, that would defeat the purpose of me putting another person on, because then I would have to split up my staff and have less windows open, again. Right. So all I'm pointing out is that we're we're adding a we're adding a person, but we're not increasing the hours of. Uh, Availability to Correct. those who wish to get <laughs> service by your office. Correct. And your your full when you say full time, uh, what does full time mean in your world? Is it thirty five hours? Thirty five hours. Thirty five hours. Why is it impossible to work forty hours there and increase the uh, hours of open operation? We would love that. So what's inhibiting you? It's not written that way in the union contract. <laughs> ah. So it's a union blockade on this, huh? So that might be a motivation to not make this position a union position, you know? Now, you mentioned you were constantly being interrupted by a telephone and, and, and redirecting telephone calls to appropriate departments and whatnot. Um, has there been any consideration to uh, having a... Uh, Basically, you're bearing the cost of other departments answering the phone for them, more or less, and transferring them out. Has there been any consideration to having some sort of <coughs> central operator, so to speak? You know? We had that at one time. I would love to have it back. What happened? Budget cuts. Fred, what happened? <laughs> I believe it, the position was eliminated at that point before yes. I arrived. Yes, yes. It, was. yes it was. Yep. We had a receptionist. We had two part-timers that, again, job shared. Okay. And they sat in the lobby, and they did filing and that kind of thing when they weren't answering phones and they, they answered the phones and directed people to the appropriate departments that walked through the door. How much is a distraction is this phone uh, service switchboard operator function that you're providing? How much of a distraction is that to your office? A lot. A lot. While they are, while our, my clerks are trying to um, process sometimes very um, tedious transactions. Mm -hmm. So, so if, in fact, we had the old-fashioned version of a switchboard operator only with new technology, of course. Um, Tim, Tim, yes. I don't mean to interrupt you again, but I have to ask. I'm, again, I'm getting lost here. You're taking all the calls? You're taking calls that don't belong in your department and transferring them to other Sometimes, places? Sometimes, yeah. If, if, if a customer doesn't look, look up a phone number for a specific department, well, because they, they call the town clerk because they think the town clerk is the secretary for the oh, entire okay, building. Oh, okay, because when I call, you get this long... 
thing. People don't thing. look. You know, people think it's like Mayberry RFD. It's, you just call the town clerk and they'll take care of everything, right? <laughs> okay. So it's okay. Just, that's that, what I just do. needed yeah. that clarification yeah. because because when I when you call, you get this thing ah. that you have to listen to and press this if you want that. And most people just look up to see what the number of the town clerk is. Okay. Okay. That explains it. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, Tim. So it would seem to me that if we had such a a uh, central switchboard, if you will, uh, that that would contribute significantly, would you say, to helping to reduce the long lines? I wouldn't say that was significantly. Mm -hmm. well, the work still say? needs to be done, and a switchboard person isn't going to be able what to do What adjective would you apply to that? Would it reduce it at all? Would it have no effect? It would. Um, I would say it would re reduce the lines in that it would it would keep my clerk's focus on the job at hand instead of having to answer the phone right. and not having to go back and forth and, that and, interrupt, and interrupting the customer at the window. And that would be a noticeable improvement? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I am uncomfortable, Mr. Chairman, with this, uh, this position. Um, I'm not convinced that it's going to reduce the lines. Um, I am uncomfortable that we're restricted to full time to find as 35 hours simply because it's a union. And apparently, we don't know how to negotiate with unions properly. Uh, whoever we is, I don't know who's doing the negotiations. I'm not blaming any person individually. Uh, just saying that this is a problem is, is that we, we're restricting these hours. And frankly, a lot of residents, I'm quite sure, would be delighted if we were not only open on Friday afternoon, which we're not, but would be delighted if they could actually come in here on Saturday and do their, their, their work. I will tell you I am 100% against that. Well, for, the that's fine. for the safety I'm of talking, my clerks with no one else in the building. Well, I'm not saying no one else should be in the building. I'm saying you know that accommodations ought to be made uh, as much as possible for the convenience of the taxpayers when they're coming in to transact uh, business with their, their local government. You know, uh, I don't see that this position uh, uh, contributes toward that end uh, in, in a significant way. Uh, we're creating a new position into the union, the very thing that's preventing us from having full time defined as you know 40 hours, which is the normal thing in the world. I think uh, I just I just don't like it. Okay. And that's it. I have all I got to say. Thank you very much. You know, I want to just mention one more thing about this phone thing because when I I have your card with your the number that goes directly to the town clerk's office, and usually when I call, I get an answering machine. We don't have an answering machine on our line. Well, it's there's a voice. There's a voicemail to give you more. You know that, and that's why we did that. Our office hours. Yeah, you know what days were ten minutes what, worth of what days were closed. <laughs> because, information because so people you, just hang up. That answers that answers probably eighty percent of the calls that we get. Okay. Probably that's probably a high number, but you know, how late are you open today? And and even though that message is there, people still will wait to talk to someone okay. and ask the same question. And so then the phone. So rings it was set up to try and deter okay, so people from having to wait to talk to a body. Oh, it's it's incredibly. And it doesn't uh, actually ring in our office until after they get through that message. Yeah, which is you, so, and you I know, speaking, and it's like a ten-page yeah. thing <clears> that you go through. Yeah, yeah it's it wonderful. gives all of the election, election <laughs> oh, just, days. You, you, just hang you, up. Enjoy it. you just hang up. <laughs> you just hang up. I just hang up. It's like okay, I don't have time for this. I send I you an email it. instead. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I'm so okay, go Sonny, online. It has all the Sonny, you've been waiting so patiently. Got a general question. The difference between union benefits wages and non-union benefit wages. Is there a difference? Health care? That's not anything I handle, I so I, <coughs> I couldn't answer that question. No, Maybe no. Christy could. <coughs> well, we're going to be Mr. talking Chairman. about we're going to be talking about personnel and things, administration. Wouldn't it fall under that? Excuse me, David. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm being so, excused, on the end. Okay, hold on, David. I'll get you. So, Sonny, we'll be we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Okay, that's not Jane's forte. Um, go ahead, please, David. It was brought up by Tim in a, in a way that positive way, and he was. I was going to ask you, and I'm going to get specific on it. <coughs> You're saying this role is a 35 hours, and it's going to be a union. 
Would you be open to it being a non-union and make it a full-time person? Then I'd be in favor of it. But some of the items that was Tim brought up, we can't go over 35 hours. I would think this person could help maybe on a Friday afternoon if they were there 40 hours. Would you be open this, to this person being a non-union? Yes um, or no? That's a two-part question. I can't answer it yes or no. Okay. Have them help out on Friday afternoon, having someone in the office by themselves? No, absolutely not. Um, I wouldn't have one person work, work, working town, in the town afternoon. Hall cl close at five to all the time. No. There's other people in the building. No, no, but I'm saying to be in my office performing transactions, one person there by themselves does not work. It does not work. This phone's to be answered. If there's a line of customers, one person there it doesn't. That doesn't help anything. It just. I mean, it might be open for those customers that want to come in on Friday afternoons. But I will tell you that in 2009, when I changed the office hours from 9 to 4.30, Monday through Friday is what they used to be, I had a lot of complaints from people wanting the office open earlier in the morning and later in the afternoon. And in order to accomplish that, I had to take those hours from somewhere. And that's where the Friday afternoon came in. I put an article in the newspaper and asked people for feedback. This is what I'm proposing. Tell me what you think. Give me your opinion. Give me suggestions. And I'll take it from there. I had nine people send me an email. And eight of the nine were positive to that change. So that's why I made the change in 2009. So, and again, restricted by the number of hours that my employees can work, I had to take those hours from somewhere. So that's where the Friday afternoons came from. And then the tax collector shortly followed afterwards, and so did the recreation department. So to change, be able to change their hours to give more hours throughout the week. Are they union, too? Um, the tax collector's assistant is, or that her deputy is, and I believe the employees so in the all recreation department are as well. Yeah. Are you finished, David? Thank you. Is it so I'm sorry I couldn't give you a yes or no answer, but well, it wasn't quite no, that it wasn't quite that simple. That was a very good answer. Okay. Is it safe to say that everybody in your department, other than yourself, is in the union? Everyone but the file clerk. Okay. Which is just a, a little position. Okay, thank you. So I would I would imagine adding a new employee, um, that person's, you're not going to be able to do, you know, non-union type of thing. Right, because that person would technically be doing the same job as the as the union employees. Oh, and that's exactly. not That's so just I, not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Exactly. Okay, go ahead, Ginny. Okay, when the bookkeeper moves from bookkeeper to senior bookkeeper, there's no raise, is there? There is a raise, yes. Why is there a raise? That's included in that number. That's proposed. Why is there a raise if she's not doing any different duties than she's doing now? Because she has, that gives her sen seniority, so that increases her. She, she's she not. And that, wait a minute, the, the, the salary for the senior bookkeeper is determined in the contract. That position has a salary already set in the contract. Are her duties going to be any different, Jane? I will give her more duties, absolutely. So you're giving her a $9,000 raise to move the pipe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anything else, okay. Jenny? Unfortunately, it's my only way to try, uh, um, the only way I could come up with. I was yeah. trying to be creative yep. to make this happen. Yep. I'm kind of restricted as to how I can make it happen. So right. I actually, uh, last year or the year before, tried to put in just a hire a full-time assistant clerk under the part-time assistant clerks and, and change it, and it just it just blew up in my face. Not, it just didn't work. And two, I made I made several attempts at it. And so. two additional part-time wouldn't work. No, that does nothing for me because they can't work any extra hours. Okay. Okay. All set, Jenny. Yep. Okay, oh, Tim. Yeah, I just want to observe that uh, <clears throat> while this says recommended by the board of selectmen four zero. If you actually watch their vote, I, some number, I didn't count them, a number of selectmen said they're just putting it out here. They're not offering an opinion. They just want the voters to decide. And so they, I'm not sure they that will. recommended 4-0 by the selectmen. Recommended 4-0 by the selectmen to put it on the ballot is accurate. Recommended for the voter to vote for it, 4-0 is not accurate based on what they said. So, um, so we're a number of selectmen took the neutral position. Am I not correct, uh, uh, Regina? I so I voted to move this forward to the warrant. Right, and it ends up it ends up it ends up telling the voter recommend we recommend that you vote for it as opposed to 
You, you should have two votes, one that says put on the ballot, and the other one says whether, we, whether you recommend the voters vote for it or not. Uh, but well, that, that's never the way it's ever made, been done. I think so. we made it clear that we didn't want to put it in the budget because we wanted it to be its own item so the voters could decide. Right. So right. that's why we voted for zero. If we didn't do that, if it was in the budget, we probably would either have a zero four zero vote or a zero zero four vote. So that's why it's four zero. Right. I, I think that it's more exactly. It should still be. Well, it's not misleading if you follow and ask or ask people why they've done something <coughs> or watch the meeting when we voted on it. It's not misleading at all. It certainly is misleading. When the selectmen vote, move a Warren article to the ballot. They vote to put the ballot to vote to put the article on the ballot with either selectmen recommend or selectmen don't recommend. I but recommend for the warrant for the voters to decide. I did not want to have it in the budget. So you're telling me that four out of zero selectmen want this article? That's what, I mean, when I said yes, that's what I meant. That's what okay. it says right here, so that's what we have to assume. So that they all recommend this article, that's what period. It, yes, that's, that would be a correct statement. Okay. okay. That's so. what any voter that sees this is going to interpret exactly, exactly well, that way. However, doing. if you watch their vote, a number of them said... <laughs> Hey, I don't, I don't have an opinion on this, or I'm not taking a position on this. I'm simply voting to put it on the ballot so the voters can decide. Yes. Okay. okay. So what so we're going to do? I didn't count how many said it, and it wasn't just on this well, one. Well, I said it, I'm sure, but I said okay. I voted to move it to the warrant. All right, everybody. Hey. And that's what I'm making clear right. is that Tim, stop, please. Okay, stop. Now, do we have a motion on this warrant article to do anything with it to recommend it? Is there a motion? Yeah, I moved, moved it. A motion on I the moved floor. it to recommend it, and, uh, and I believe second Regina seconded it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, are we finished talking about yeah. this? No. Quick question. Go ahead. ahead. Shouldn't we therefore, or can we, just change the wording at the bottom no. so it doesn't appear? We don't have the authority to change any words. No. no. Okay. So the answer to that is no. The answer is no. All right. So go ahead, Regina. Mr. Town Manager. The Board of Selectmen have voted on this tally here to be just presented. One like article right. will show the Board of Selectmen recommends 4 0 that the, the article be adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Th those in favor of recommending this or an article, please raise your hand. We're voting right now. Okay. So we have, we have um, Mike Pluff, Steve LaBranch, Regina Barnes, Chuck Rage, and Sonny Kravitz. Those against? We have Ginny Bridal, uh, David, and also Tim Jones, and of course, no abstentions. Mr. Chairman, oh, thank you. I'd like the record to show that if there were a vote for me to put it on the ballot, I would vote to put it on the ballot. Oh, I would definitely. Yeah, but I wouldn't vote for the voters. The record, I wouldn't recommend that the voters vote it. For would you, Jenny? I wouldn't. No. No. Okay. Well, that's what we we just <laughs> did. Okay. So the just to be clear, three people decided not to. So uh, the the opposers are uh, Jenny and Dave David and, and, and Tim Jones. The rest Thank are you. yes. Okay, we're done. Thank, Thank you very much, Jane. You don't have any more warrant articles, do you, Jane? No. We're done with Jane. <laughs> the, the first one I notice every time when we do warrant articles, it seems like the first one is like <laughs> giving birth. You know, it takes a long time. But after that, yeah, it was almost as painful. Move along a little bit. <laughs> that was our first contraction. It's always the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay, so.